Hello and welcome to session number 60 of Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. We're back. Hi. I'm very energetic today. So, uh, be prepared for <laughs> things? Are we prepared for things? I hate hmm. when things happen in my games. I'm never prepared for things. Well, that's not going to be good. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Is it, um, you things. should have thought about it. <laughs> Spoiler warning now. I'm playing the wrong game. <laughs> Yabba! Boom! Outlander's Guide yes. to Sinks and Ladaria. Sinks <laughs> <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> All right. Here we are. It's been... We've had another long break. Uh, and never again. We're never going on break. For the rest of the campaign. We're strapped to our chairs. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't tell the viewers. They don't know. They don't have to know the things that I do to you. I mean, if anyone out there wanted to learn Morse code, I'm just saying. <laughs> So, pew, 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 bam, boom, bam, I'm looking in <laughs> Sid's direction. Hello. Shut up. It's you. You have been chosen. You're the chosen one. Chosen one for everything? To lead the campaign to glory? For, for all the stuff. All the uh, Ladaria's stuff. To find all uh, the things? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And Let's to go. solve all the things. Oh, no. I don't want to solve all the things. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you just the document conspiracy? all the things so others can solve them? <laughs> the hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's on you. Okay, I guess I will start by documenting what happened last time in the Adventures of Lodaria. Let's get to Lodaria. Uh, so yeah, I'm coming to you from a chalk mine in Norway, so I apologize for the reverb, uh, as I will now screen share something... Mm, We'll see how this goes. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. All right. Let's get this working. Ha. Watch and pop and full screen and turn it on. Do you want the music? Uh, sure. Yeah, we can have that. Okay. Uh, so oh. last time we found ourselves in a... Ah. Oh, and already? Go ahead. Okay. He loaded. <laughs> <laughs> Last time we <laughs> find ourselves in the jungle with massive trees, giant canopies, and god rays of the sun going through the leaves. Clusters of flowers, small rain showers, and intoxicating flowers. Uh, and one of the small quests we had was that Pip was looking for a feather from a baby bird. And as we had it, uh, there were three baby birds in the nest with deep bright red feathers and after some hmm, talks and non-trades which probably glimmer was very disappointed by that birds did not understand the concept of trade uh worms were given and a feather was plucked so one part uh of the checklist was checked off uh after such uh pip went into some sort of prowler mode put on this mask and wielded a knife and I don't know what direction <laughs> this is going and I'm very scared. <laughs> also, the mask made him look like a superhero and that's a whole thing, so I, I don't know what's happening. Um, one Another part of that quest on the checklist was a tooth uh, from a poisonous snake. Or venomous, I don't remember. Uh, but yeah, it seems like there was um, not an easy, uh, uh, not easy to convince the snake, but the snake sort of just admitted, you know, I probably don't have a way out of this a means of escape, so might as well agree on a trade for a tooth for some rats. Uh, and then Pip had to do a whole mime performance to <laughs> convey to Pontifex that, hey, could you heal the snake after we pluck the tooth from this guy, please? Uh, and after some time, it finally happened. And after that, uh, 
And uh, thank you to everyone in the top right for doc, uh, providing images for this little collage. Amazing. <laughs> uh, Tekka was swallowed by a giant trap door and fell deep underground. Oh no. And then a large feline machine prowls at dusk. A ride running towards the group. And then it turns out there were even more of them. Oh no. Uh, and after some combat, they melted into metal puddles, which, you know, that's probably fine. We don't need to go further into that. It's probably fine. So uh, true. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, or during, I should say, a golden metal feline glistens in moonlight also arrived at the scene. Um, and after such... We met this little guy in the bottom right, Felric <laughs> Baffle Twist. Very accurate image. <laughs> He's holding a gun. <laughs> With uh, flushed cheeks and a rifle, documented by this uh, pistol. Yeah, thank you. Uh, talking about, hey, this place is scary and I don't want to be here and I'm just a little guy. Don't worry about me. <laughs> um, saying that there's a camp nearby. Uh, a gnome camp where a lot of people have started leaving and packing up because, uh, hey, we don't like this place either. It's spooky and scary and I want to live. Uh, and apparently a female Ezin, uh, a local Ezin, had also died there some weeks ago. So that plot thread keeps on a chugging and keep getting worried what's going on there. Um, and while there used to be around 50 at the camp, there are now less than half. And as we hear that, paranoia sets in. As an arrow hits Brook's foot, golden bright eyes pierce through the darkness of the jungle. The fangs of nightfall have arrived. And that was that. Cool! Woo Look at nice. this little guy! Nice. He's just a little <laughs> guy! Well done! <laughs> That was great, Sid. That really yes. took me back to like my stagecraft class in college. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Oh, what am I gonna call this inspiration? Uh, accepting suggestions. A large inspiration. That's the stock image inspiration. <laughs> you can have a stock inspiration. It. I paid a license for it, so it's, you know it's good. You're in the <laughs> stock market now, Sid? Oh no. <laughs> I bought stocks in Shutterstock. <laughs> okay, so I did kidnap your memes last time. What the heck? Meanie. So I am going to return them to you as soon as I find out where I put them. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Ah, uh, let me look at my notes. That was clever, Austin. Well done. <clears throat> what did I do? Mini. A, a mini me. Oh, oh, I understand. <laughs> my my mind had already forgotten what I had said. <laughs> <coughs> the mind of a performer. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm moving to the next bit. <laughs> no time to stay in that one. <laughs> so. Uh, a small distance ahead of you stands a mechanical contraption resembling the sleek body of a panther with the torso of a human. I have just accidentally deleted my paragraph. Hold on. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> we beat him. Someone just seems to have erased them from existence. How, how joyous. <laughs> Its head is that of a panther, uh, bearing its gleaming metal fangs, um, and its eyes glowing gold from a distance. <clears throat> the creature holds a, a familiar in construction bow in its sturdy mechanical grip, and its intent is clearly far from peaceful. Everybody roll initiative. Oh. It's a little small. Is this... Are you going to catch it? Yes. <laughs> I don't see why not. 
<clears throat> would someone, I guess I should have discussed this ahead of time, but would someone kindly adopt Pontifex for a bit? I'm squeakless, so I'm I'm happy to take him in okay. <laughs> for, for a while. I'm squeakless. I am squeakless. What? It wasn't that funny. <laughs> it was to me. One hundred. No, I just I accidentally closed it. <laughs> oh my god! I believe it. I believe it. Man, those boots are better than I thought. <laughs> Oh, I need to roll for Professor mm -hmm. P. Professor P poison. That's a reference for Sid. Good start, y'all. Yeah. I'm actually right, going to use those boots. Should, just should I really be con controlling Bonifex? <laughs> You're perfect for him. I mean, Minus two. Uh, oh. <clears throat> Does it go to your or his counter? Shit. I put it on his. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <clears throat> As you should. As you should. Hey! Much better. Ugh. Oh. Okay. Um, the one off my 23 is gonna help. <clears throat> we should be good to. Begin. So, very on. You're the first to react. All right. It's okay. Th there he is, right in front of me. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Wait, I'm missing the. Hold on, stop the music. <laughs> I'm missing the little guy. God, God. <laughs> stop the music. He's not. <laughs> he's not even set up for it. Hold on. Uh, uh, bloop. <laughs> Hold on a second. R run the ads. <clears throat> So, Gosh, come Father, up have you even read the script? You're not even on the right side. <laughs> <laughs> A quick sell product on my Twitch channel. <laughs> I, I'm. It shouldn't be a real one. We'll get uh, DNC. Ob absolutely. <laughs> uh, now selling ice dice, the, the <laughs> dice that you can put in your cup and they melt. Or you can roll them and hide the evidence that you fudged. Amazing. <laughs> I have always wanted to make like edible dice, like chocolate, you know? You've got the stuff for them, don't you? Or are they not food grade molds? No, I don't have. <clears throat> I don't have, yeah, food safe. Uh, mold, uh, like silicon. Okay. Okay. So, Starting over. Starting. Hey! Oh, <laughs> <Mary I'm... on. laughs> oh my god, it's my turn. Okay, there he is. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um... Uh... So, think first things first. Uh, pulling out the gun again. That seemed to work really good last time. And... She's just going to, uh... Bamp and poof out into some shadows and pop back out over here. Mm hmm. I forgot where everything is on my character sheet. Just a sec. There it goes. <laughs> Take your time. Yes. If I can't click on anything, it's because I'm not signed into Dice Club. That's why I can't click on anything. Clicking on things might be needed. Yes, just so I can remember what I used and what I haven't. Anyway, so using our, our wolf blessing, she's going to hop for that way and then uh, take out the gun and shoot. And I believe, let me double check here. Uh, so I get two, yeah, I get two shots now. So just load and then click. 
reload and fire again. Mm hmm. First one is. Uh, I'm assuming 11 does not hit. 11 does not. Okay. Second shot. I'm assuming that one's much better. Okay. So, the first bullet, um, rather than a miss, it, like, just directly hits uh, this this construct. And it makes, like, no effort to really get out of the way. Uh, just takes the hit and doesn't even seem to feel it. Uh, the second one, uh, you aim rather than uh, for... <clears throat> you adjust the aim to go straight for the middle of the torso, uh, where you feel like you will do the most damage possible and... You hit exactly where you wanted to. Nice. And... Seven. Nine. Okay. <clears throat> Viren, roll a perception check. Let my shield... Uh... Okay. Advantage. Yeah, Sentinel Shield. That's right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, insufficient. Oh, oh, oh! I mean, the. I made a typo <laughs> in my stat block. Oh no. Not allowed. <laughs> okay. As I said, you hit this machine square in its uh, humanoid chest. Um, and you see the bullet... You, you saw the trajectory of the bullet. And yet you see no actual damage left on the machine itself. Uh, you're not quite sure if it bounced off. Or what exactly happened? But the uh, this machine seems utterly uninjured. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Just gonna move over here just to clear the way, and that will be my turn. Okay. At the end of Virion's turn. Uh, Viren, especially you being so close, you can hear the gears whirring almost menacingly uh, within this creature. It sounds like, like a rumbling growl. Um, it... Uh, we're going with this. Um, it uh, draws back the string of its bow. And uh, shoots at you. Of course, it does. You know, I might need my d20s. I think you should use a smaller one. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll a d12 instead. <laughs> this is a little guy. A little d20. Well, I'm opening with a variable roll, so uh, it's an, an 11 to hit. Eleven misses. Okay. Uh, Eleven does indeed miss. Um, you're mm, how to put this? Okay. Uh, you you always been quick on your feet. You see somebody pointing a weapon at you. You just uh, bend your knees a little bit, and you're out of the way long before the error uh, is anywhere near you. Uh, and as you just sidestep it and look back at the spot that was hit by the arrow, you see the ground slowly beginning to open up into this dark, empty void uh, from which this misty purple smoke begins to emerge. It's going to be in this location. Okay. 
that was the legendary action. Uh, Felric! Felric has been screaming ever since he had <laughs> the smallest inkling that the fangs of Nightfall had arrived. Uh, Virion, previously you uh, sneakily gave him back his ammunition. Mm -hmm. um, and nobody had noticed. You even managed to get it past Pontifex, who has had his uh, eyes on him the entire time. Uh, but this is the moment where everybody would find out because this little guy is gonna climb on this little rock and gain just a tiny bit, little bit of height. Um, and uh, he's going to shoot like a maniac at the Fangs of Nightfall. Um, your gun, Virion, it makes a pretty loud sound, as all firearms do, but uh, uh, Felric's rifle, it's like thunder, as if lightning just struck near you guys. Um, all... <laughs> I rolled two natural ones! <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Felric! <laughs> Buddy, come on. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, like, like a lightning strike, but nowhere near with that kind of effectiveness. Um, <clears throat> I'll get your head in the game. <laughs> the, his hands, uh, uh, for anyone who might have his eyes on him, are just shaking so much. Both shots just go completely wide. One is way too high, and one is. Uh, off to the side um, and, and you hear him just scrambling to duck behind this rock <clears throat> and uh, he, he's gone he's hiding <laughs> Tekka uh, yeah Tekka is the price of the second set of uh, gunshot or rifle shots and yeah he just scowls at Felric as he cowers <laughs> behind the rock uh, and then Tekka is going to sprint into the shrubbery and the forest uh dashing uh, and ending up behind mm -hmm. he's unaffected by difficult terrain right he's not affected by difficult terrain okay so yeah no problems there uh yeah and then i'm gonna use uh, let's see i'm gonna use a key point to dodge as a bonus action that's the end of the turn okay uh, before we move on to Brook, the Fangs of Nightfall will take its second reaction. Crack, because I tend to forget. Um, and is going to attempt to just uh, um, swipe at Tekka with his tail. Uh, that is a 23 to hit. With disadvantage? Uh-huh. What? Okay. Well, that tail is sure hits. Okay. My, fir <laughs> my first few rolls have been crap, and then I roll a disadvantage, and suddenly I'm doing fine. Uh, Alright. <laughs> How powerful of a tail is that? Um... Wait, that, I was about to answer that like it was an echo question, uh, but it, I mean it's a it's a big piece of metal, um, <clears throat> just very heavy that just whips at you like being hit by a long chain. Um, that is seventeen points of psychic damage. Uh, you're hit and you can feel yourself just nearly being knocked over. Um, but the pain that you're feeling is strange, uh, unlike anything you have ever been hit by before. Uh, it feels like it's not quite in your body. And when you look down at where you've been hit on your uh, on your left side and your left arm, there isn't any bruising. Uh, now oh. we're moving on to Brook. Okay. <clears throat> I think my turn will be pretty simple. 15. What? Alright. That's my. 
that's my movement. I'm using my action to get close. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> then bonus action to activate my right. So I just need to do some damage to myself. All right. And that's my turn. Okay. Yep. Also, okay. you're mute. Ah. Yes. 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 You're with yes. us. Oh, uh, yes. one thing. Uh, you said it was psychic damage, right? The tail hair? Yes. Uh, tech has resistance, so I take half of that, I believe. Oh. <laughs> that is correct. Let's go. Um, Pip is going to use his bonus action to cast Improved Magic Stone on a few stones in his pouch and take him out. We'll pop on over next to slash behind Virian <laughs> and slingshot one of these stones to towards the Fangs of Nightfall. Okay. And... That's a nine to hit. Nine does not hit. Great. Pip hides behind Virian. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get him next time. <laughs> At the end of Pip's turn, the Fangs of Nightfall will attempt to uh, tail Brook. I'm going to use this die because he does way better than the others right now. <clears throat> against me. Is a 21 to hit. Yes. It is 17 points of psychic damage. With his teeth? With his tail. Oh, I thought you, you said using his fangs. <laughs> <laughs> he is the fangs. But same thing with the <laughs> psychic damage. With, you haven't with seen him bite tail? anything yet. That's why I'm getting some psychic damage. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, why don't we fix that? Because it is its turn. Ah! <laughs> I haven't done anything yet! Ah! Well, I already <laughs> did 17 points of damage for not doing anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, why did you have to look at the stats block? <laughs> <laughs> I looked at a stat block before we started. Gonna need more dice. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we were talking about uh, fangs. Uh, so the golden machine in front of you, uh, its mm -hmm. head is thrice. I dropped my dice. <laughs> its head is thrice the size of yours. It does something akin to a snarl. Uh, and, and as it opens its mouth and bears its fangs, you can just see all the little bits of uh, uh, machinery uh, at work just deep down in its throat. Uh, you don't really have time to admire it. It tries to bite you. At 22 to hit. Yeah. That is 34 points of psychic damage. You okay. don't bleed from this. You can feel your arm shattering for a moment. You're certain that it just destroyed your forearm, but you don't lose your grip on your weapon. You're, you're fine. You're still in one piece, but you're hurting so, so badly. Um... Heck, I, it will try to hit you with its uh, uh, free hand. Um, it is a 12 to hit. That's not hit. Yay! <laughs> Keep rolling that dice! <laughs> <laughs> it was a disadvantage! <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Tekka, you, this machine is currently focused on Brook, and yet with incredible speed, it suddenly redirects its attention on you, but you're just a little bit faster than it is. Uh, it tries to 
and tries to swipe with its incredibly sharp metal claws, but you duck beneath um, <clears throat> just in time and uh, uh, you, you dodge the blow. And then... Oh, I should have rolled for this first. Yep. Okay, then. Uh, that's it! Pontifex! Okay... This is... This is already not great. Um... We're fine. Mm-hmm. Looking at options here... Okay, uh... Pontifex is going to come a bit closer. Ah, lagging a little bit. Um, let's see. A little bit closer. How far did I move? Okay, I've got one more. <clears throat> Uh, he's going to cast Bless on Tekka, Brook, and Virion. <laughs> and uh, one of you, if you want, can use your reaction to make an attack. I think Brook should. Agree. Go, Brook. Do it. Ooh, all right. That's actually pretty good. Okay. If I hit. All right. Or I got you. What does a bless do? A plus what? Plus a d4 on your attack rolls and saving throws? All right. We got the sting. Oh, wait. That's not how I roll. Well, it's... um. So it's a plus 10, I guess, plus this. I think you should reroll that, because... Help once, uh, yeah. Once you make that swing and looks like it's going wide, Virion will just call out, just like, uh, uh, okay, "There's an opening there," so and use the um, inspiring words so you can reroll that. Yeah, the same that, like the first is. roll you saw was just a bless, so I just rolled a d4, and the second one mm -hmm. is a d20 rolled, so I rolled a nine with a d20 plus. Yeah, roll that. Yep. So, oh, 19. Yeah, it should be 19. Got it. To hit. Wah! I accidentally muted myself. You said the total is 18? 19. 19 hits. Okay. That's good. So... On the end... On the six... On seven... Bada boom, bada bam! 16 damage. Okay. Remind me what type. Oh. One second. Radiant. Okay. <laughs> it's written on my desk. <laughs> 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 um, also, <clears throat> since I hit it, I would like to do or cast Brand of Castigation. Right. Oh Let me read it, it, it says, real quick. Okay. <clears throat> Noted. So now we always know where the creature <coughs> is, as long as it's on, on our plane. And each time the Brana creature deals damage to you or another creature, I can see within five feet of me, the Brana creature takes three psychic damage. So huddle around me! <laughs> All right. Okay, that was that's still Pontifex's turn, yeah. Uh, um, yes, but, before... but he can do nothing more. Okay, uh, with everybody being here, um, everyone outside of Virion uh, can also roll a perception check. Actually, Virion gets a reroll. Ooh. <clears throat> Uh, 
Uh, one, two, three, four. Wait, where am I missing? Oh, Dennis. Yeah. What did you need to roll? Sorry. A perception check. Perception. <clears throat> I am perceiving. Okay. So for for Brook and Tekka, uh, Viren uh, doesn't notice anything new from whatever I said before. For for Tekka and Brook, both of them seeing um, Brook's blow, um, definitely connecting, and yet leaving no actual markings on the fangs of Nightfall. Um, Tekka, you with the utmost clarity from your position, you are certain the Brook's weapon um, went through it and just found no resistance whatsoever. Uh, and Pontifex is done, you said, Austin? Yep. Okay, let me count real quick. Okay, that means it's it's Virion's turn. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, we're hitting it, and it looks and feels and sounds like we're connecting, but just doesn't seem to be doing anything. Uh, correct. Also, at the start of your turn, I actually need you to roll a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw? I'm not good at those. Told you. Oh, no. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, a two. Uh, Virion. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I'm trying to set the mood here. <laughs> uh, dang it. <clears throat> Virion, the ground is swaying left and right, and it's so difficult to maintain your balance. Uh, all around you, there's a, there's a storm raging on, and you can hear the sound of cannons firing, and then the terrifying noise of a ship's spine breaking, and you're falling, plunged into deep, cold water. Uh, at the start of your turn, you take... Whoa, then don't roll those dice. <laughs> <laughs> D20s. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, 18 points of psychic damage. And you are currently frightened. Uh. Whoops. Do that. I'm trying to remember how to get the things back. Oh, mm? uh, what do you need? The change my hit points down here. Oh, your thing is gone. Hold on. Yeah, my th there you there go. There it goes. And frightened is disadvantage, can't move closer, correct? Or disadvantage on attacks? And... Yeah. Uh, correct. Okay, cool. Do you not have a frightened token or am I just blind? I don't see it. So, uh. Oh, well, we don't need it. Yeah, it's fine. I'll, re I'll remember that, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. Um, I think just, uh, Virian just takes a, a second to try to get herself back to the fight here, get her head back in the game. And I will use my Warlord's favor on myself now, because I can do that. Give myself a little healing. How much healing? Uh, nine. I don't get the extra ten hit points for my other stuff, but I do get nine hit points Ooh. back. Okay. A uh, little buffer. Um, and I think we'll just, uh, uh, try to shoot again, just, uh, I don't think it matters, but takes a step there so she can get a clearer shot and then just 
loads up the gun and shoots twice. Okay. That's uh take this advantage. Hmm. Nope. Okay, oh. twelve misses. Ah. Uh, you push through. Um you shake your head and ah, uh, uh, seventeen misses. As Um, it's not as disastrous as Felvik's shots. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, at least you don't hit Tech or Baruch. Yes. <laughs> um, and every, every time you get so close to actually hitting it, you get... It, it feels like your, your bullets, you just really struggle with uh, uh, piercing through the metal body of this creature. Then again, everything seems to struggle. Oh, she's blessed! Oh, I am blessed! I was too busy being afraid. <laughs> that's right! <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, that's Brooke and Virion and... Tekka. Tekka. So... 15 and 19. Then. The 19, 19 hits. Woo! Oh. Lucky shot. Thank you. Yeah. Oops. Uh, subtract one from this. I had the wrong die, so it's ten damage. Okay. Oh, I'm doing math wrong. Hold on. Uh, once again, even though one of the bullets didn't quite seem to connect, or at least not to hit of any vital part. Um, the second one, straight through the throat, out the other side, no hole left behind. Um. Hmm? I, I was gonna say, I think Virion just, like, at this point, she's like, are we sure this thing is real? And that's gonna be her turn. Okay. Somewhere behind you. Uh, oh, actually, no, hold on. Uh. Uh. Legendary action. Uh -uh. Put that down. Uh, that's going to be. Pontifex. Um. Yeah. The machine. <laughs> sorry, uh, I was reading this. Uh, the machine draws its uh, um, the string of the bow again. Uh, that is um, twenty-eight to hit Pontifex. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, that's the bow, which is this much. Nineteen points of psychic damage. Uh, the error. Just striking Pontifex uh, um, at, at, at the height of his uh, hips. And his hips are quite fragile nowadays. I don't know why <laughs> I'm saying that. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm. Okay, I'm gonna make a little note of this so I don't forget next time. And then, uh, boom! Boom! Oh, boom! Okay, sorry. This time I hit both, and the second one was a natural 20, so we're comp <laughs> making up for earlier. Yeah, that'll work. Um. Oh my god! Pontifex must be very happy that this is not aimed at him. <laughs> I literally do not have enough dice for this. Oh my. The, the crit. It's a shame it won't do anything. Unless um, guns are the only thing. No, that's not true. Maybe just big guns. <laughs> maybe just big guns. Varian's only got a little gun. <laughs> oh. Little guy is a big gun. <laughs> uh, even though you're... Uh, quite a distance away from Felric, uh, the sound of his rifle is 
is deafening and your ears are ringing for many seconds afterwards. Um, and both... I can't really see, like... Uh, I'm just struggling with words today. Uh, regardless, despite having, like, just straight line of sight on the fangs of nightfall and seemingly both hits connecting, still no visible damage left on the machine. Uh, Eka. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I think Tekka, having seen what happened, yeah, with Brook's Blade, um, Tekka is going to try to grab onto the tail and try to pry it off. Okay. Mm -hmm. Start with a grapple check, which yeah, will be contested. I'm thinking of Super Mario Sunshine right now when you like pull the. <laughs> limbs from the squid. Uh, that sounds that really athletic? metal, but it's like... <laughs> no! It's... Nothing, no! Sorry, what did you say, Sid? Is it athletics <laughs> for the grapple? Uh, yes, it's athletics. Oh, okay. okay, that's contested by my 18. Ooh, you grab okay. onto the tail. Um, as I as I mentioned earlier, it's just it's heavy. Uh, you're only holding like onto half of the weight of the actual thing, uh, as it's very much still connected to the rest of the body. But like the metal it's made of is definitely very thick and dense, uh, and you you can feel it. Uh, um, like you you have. It's made of many interconnecting parts, and so you have to kind of be careful not to get your fingers caught into them but you adjust your grip and it's it's solid hmm. um you said you wanted to pull it off right to at least yeah okay so the grapple essentially replaces one of your attacks so you can mm -hmm. now just do as many attacks as you have available and want to do um and uh, i'll choose like a threshold for the damage and if you pass it it's you're gonna pull off the tail. Okay. Um, then I think he's using the back end of the hammer attachment to just like kind of bang where the connection would be between the main body and the tail and just try, oh. to, try to weaken that part. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and. I don't know. Is that an unarmed strike? Should I consider it that attack? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go with unarmed. That's fine. Okay. Twenty-six hits. All right. Uh... Okay. And then I'm going to use a uh, Flurry of Blows to so do another two unarm strike. Alright. Just gonna keep trying to weaken this thing. <laughs> See if any, there's any point to this. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. You feel the resistance. Uh, whatever you're holding, it's, it's, it's physical and it's uh, of quite uh, sturdy construction. Uh, and you have to really just plant your feet in the ground uh, to maintain your, your grip on it. But you can feel it just... Um, you can feel this, this machine part just uh, beginning to slowly give... Um, how do you say? Give way? Like, right, yeah, 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 that yeah, makes okay. sense. Alright, anyways, 29, absolutely! All right. Eight. Oh, I haven't counted your nine from before. No, no. No. And, and does the hammer seem to meet resistance? As like Tekka uh, yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. slamming a bit. Okay. Six. And 
Look at those beautiful rolls. 18, 18, 19, 15. But they sure don't do a whole lot of damage, but it's something. We'll, we'll try it. <laughs> Chip damage. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the help of your hammer, uh, you're like first chipping away at the base of the tail, and then as you're beginning to see some, uh, you don't see damage, but you can feel that the the, uh, the metal is like loosening up, and you use the uh, you, you sort of use it like a crowbar, uh, and you put one foot on on the breast of the fangs of nightfall, and pull with all your strength, uh, and you're almost knocked to your uh, down uh, on the ground as the tail comes off, and I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw. Oh boy, okay. Uh, let's see. In one moment. Twenty-one. Okay. Uh, you feel yourself just overcome with this uh, uh, sudden oh, uh, just. Yeah. If it's relevant, I add a d4. Uh, for the oh, yeah, bless so twice. Yeah. Absolutely. Sorry, the roll was so high that I didn't notice that you didn't add it already. <laughs> 24. Okay. Uh, there's this sense of terror that runs down your spine to chill as you realize that a tail moves on its own. You instinctively just let go of it and it starts slithering on the ground like a snake. Oh, okay. uh, be here. <laughs> cool. Great. Exciting what Tekka wanted, I'm sure. <laughs> Anything else on your turn? That is sadly the end of the turn. Oh, well. Okay. Um, this is terrible. I'm not going to use that. At the end of Tekka's turn... Uh, the ground directly beneath the fangs of nightfall. The, that's very cute. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying. Uh, <laughs> turns darker and darker. Uh, a hole to the void between the stars opens up beneath him. Um, he doesn't. F it doesn't fall in it, but rather this void rises up to envelop it. Uh, shadows clinging to the machine until it is gone from view. The tail remains. I just pick it up. I'm assuming there's no reaction for that. Uh, you assume correctly. <clears throat> Ooh, I get to use it immediately. <laughs> Where <what>? are you? <laughs> 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 There's a tail? I mean, I know what I meant is with like the castigation. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the thing. The, yes, absolutely. The... Right, right, sorry. That, that's, that's what it's called. Uh... Uh... Okay. Any direction, any distance. Uh, indeed. Okay. Uh, Brooke, this thing vanishes before your eyes and you just uh, immediately turn around. Let me count the... Let me count the squares. Yeah, uh, and with count I mean... Okay, uh, that's 60. Oh god, Felric! <laughs> it's doomed. <laughs> it's <a little> bad. <laughs> so, uh, reappearing from the... Uh, among the bushes here. Uh, it didn't make a sound, but Brook, you just can feel it. Oh god. I just got there! <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> well, I turn around. <laughs> Until I run, it's over there! Careful, Felrig! Felric is screaming over. like a madman. Mm, make my way over there. <laughs> I just got this. 
Wait, if I got... Question. Question? Did it have more than one tail? No, just the one. Okay, so if I get close to it, I won't be psychically whipped. Good. Otherwise, I might be dead. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> I can't get over there. I'm safe, it can't tail me now anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's the only thing they could ever do to us. <laughs> That's my turn. <laughs> uh, hey, by the start of your turn, I need to roll a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Eh. <laughs> Nine. Nine, okay. Um. Uh, Pip, there are there are times, especially at night, in the minutes leading up to you falling asleep, where you think about things, and uh, there's these moments where you're not quite asleep, but also not quite awake, and you just you can see it. You can see uh, you can see devils laughing, taking your parents away. You can see your, uh, you can see your grandma laughing, taking things away from you. Everything in this world is just too difficult to understand, too confusing, too dangerous, and too cruel for your young mind to be able to face. And there's nothing that you can do. You take... Uh, 28 points of psychic damage. Holy shit. And you're frightened. Ow. They're a faster way to do this. <laughs> <laughs> click, 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 click. <laughs> I just like clicking. I think it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> there was one particular generation of Pokemon games where if you... It would take forever for hit points to go down. Mm, yep. On chances and such. Um. Does Pip still get a turn? Yeah. Okay. He's just frightened. Just. <laughs> just frightened. Yeah, you know. Uh. Ooh. I think Pip's going to realize that. He, yeah, he can't do this on his own. It's too scary. We need reinforcements. And Pip oh. is going to take out the Armabastu cry whistle and blow on it as hard as he can. <laughs> and hope that there are some in this jungle too. <laughs> <clears throat> is that an action or the whistle. an interaction? Hold on, I don't remember the whistle. <laughs> the, it's the wooden carved whistle that the one who stares made to lure in Armabastu oh. because it made the same sound as okay. a baby Armabastu cry. Okay. All right. Oh, that's a cool idea. Um. Roll a perception check. Um. Yeah, just just roll a perception check. Okay. Fifteen. Fifteen? Okay. Um... I'm not Same 15. as my hit points. Uh, oh, you're currently... Oh! Uh, let it's me take a to... quick look at my notes. Okay, cool. Um, but on a, on a 15, uh, you don't hear a, an, a reply. You don't hear animals crying in response. No noise as of yet. Okay. Was that an action? I'm gonna call that an object interaction. Okay. 
Um. So much pain. So much pain in this world. I think, uh, we're gonna try. We're gonna try a mind sliver on this guy. It's an intelligence saving throw. Intelligence saving throw coming right up. Mm, 15. It just saves. Oh. Aww. Uh, bonus action. Nothing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Actually, bonus action, we'll just pull Tekka a little bit closer. <laughs> Give oh. him a head start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I will also give you that, that feeling of dread and those horrible visions you had. Um, just... You can tell that your vicinity to this spot is what triggered it. Well, then I need to get the heck out of there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, done. At the end of Pip's turn, we're going to take a legendary action. Oh. Huh? <laughs> huh? It's been doing this the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nani? <laughs> um so he was correct that it can't doesn't have a tail anymore. <laughs> I can't do this. Yeah. Wait, what's the difference between these two? Good job, Tekka. Uh, so the Fangs of Nightfall is going to make a tail attack on Tekka. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a 15 to hit Tekka. Doesn't hit! Okay, the tail uh, tries to wrap itself around one of your ankles. Uh, and it... You, you slip out of it right before it can make a knot <laughs> around your leg and actually cling to you. Uh, and you just kick it away and take a step back. It's probably Pip Pip's telepathy as well, right? It's just like, yeah, <laughs> it pushes you just in time. <laughs> uh, how far? Hold on. I don't use these often. I'm gonna... Oops. I'm gonna need one. Yeah. It's a... The... I swear to God, if it leaves again. Hmm. Okay. I can do. I can do this. So, uh, let me move them away now. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, Brooke, this this machine, seeing that you keep chasing it, it uh, um almost almost just. It sidesteps and it moves around you. Are you expecting it to try to come at you from behind, but instead it stops here. Um, draws its bow. Um, doesn't shoot it at you. Doesn't shoot it at uh, the arrow at anyone, really. Um, it The machine shoots straight into the ground. And from that spot, this void opens up, not in a small area, but beneath the feet of Brook, Virion, and Pontifex in this 60-foot cone. Yeah, the three of you. Uh, so... That's a wisdom saving throw from the three of you. Wow, I'm not I good find. at these. <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> Does a bless still work? Yeah, yeah, bless applies. 
Ooh. Hey, look! Finally happened. Whoa. Yeah, Tekka is just out of it. <laughs> oh, oh, I would no. feel so bad if I pulled you into that cone. <laughs> <laughs> just plotting Tekka's downfall. Not gonna lie, I don't know if the first one was a 20, a d20, or is it d4? <laughs> <laughs> one and two. <laughs> Uh, I can tell okay. you, the second one for me was the 20. <laughs> oh no. Are you taking them? I'm... Oh, oh, I have the child with knife. I'm gonna child with knife my way out of this, hopefully. Oh? Inspiration it. Much better. <laughs> What's your inspiration? Where, where are you? I forgot what you're saying. Oh yeah, we right have here. that! Child with uh, knife inspiration. I child 19. with knife inspiration. Okay, that's 19. And your bonus is zero. A, can I roll an inspiration for the two? I totally okay. forgot I had that. You can use an inspiration if you'd like. That's why I give them to you. Alright. So you can waste them. Um, <laughs> okay. Not wasting them. <laughs> so I do have do I roll bless, another so plus plus three Do I roll another bless or do I just take the one from before? Um, Do you know which one was which? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just roll I'm your rolling. bless. It's a d4, right? Yeah. Come on. So 10 plus yeah. 4 plus 2? Two. 16. 16? Okay. That means that uh, Viren is the only one who passes. Oh, no. What? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um... Viren, perhaps because you were of your earlier proximity to this other area, um, where the ground opened up and mist started to spill out, um, you see what's coming, and it's just so much more of it than before. You immediately <laughs> just book it. This, <laughs> you're out of here. Um, Brook and Pontifex are just caught in it. Uh, Brook, it's like the war never ended. And you're still in it, and you're still fighting, and all around you, all of your friends are dying, one by one, in front of you, painfully, and there's nothing you can do to prevent it. Fuck. Take 30 points of psychic damage. 30? 30, 3 zero. Pontifex. No. Um, this is not good, guys. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> As for Pontifex, um, he sees, uh, he sees the house that he was born in, one that he himself doesn't have memories of, but he saw in the, in the, um, a vision, a dream of sorts, a while back. Uh, and this house is empty. Not only there's nobody there, but is, there's also nothing left there. An empty crib, empty bookshelves, no signs of life, or of a life having been lived in here, anywhere. Pontifex takes 24 points of psychic damage. Uh, both of them are frightened. Uh, broken sure? and, and unconscious. <laughs> oh, are they both unconscious? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh! I, <laughs> I may not have been looking at uh, what was we going We are on. frightened. Okay. <laughs> yes. uh, the good news is that that action like, is the Fangs of Nightfall's entire turn. And also... Uh, Hold on, I need to get this back out. Uh, five? Five. I'm just gonna leave it here because it is, this entire area is purple now. It's not just his boy. It's all of it. I'm not gonna make like a hundred copies of it. Just picture it. Can it change its color? Out of curiosity. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, Austin, don't uh, bother rolling death saving throws for Pontifex. Because he's Aaron, already dead. It's your turn. <laughs> All right. So, uh, oh. am I still fighting? Actually, since we're at the top of the... Uh, uh, no, you're not frightened anymore. Okay, cool. Uh, how many does it take? Okay, okay. Uh, sorry, go on. Okay. Um, so I needed to know that, because... Mm -hmm. right, Although, I do need a wisdom uh, saving throw to begin with. Because you're in the area. Listen. <laughs> you're, you're not you're I'm, good at these. I'm not good at these, and Project oh. is down, so I'm not blessed anymore, correct? Oh, that's true, because, yeah, it's concentration. I'm not good at these! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Viren, as the ship you're on is going down, uh, somewhere uh, a distance away from you, and it's hard to see because it's nighttime, but every once in a while, lightning strikes, and there is this one moment of clarity where you can see ahead of you and on this burning ship somebody is um, as if reaching for you, uh, arm extended, but they're too far and their face is completely blank. You think... Oh god. 22 points, 21 points of psychic damage. Ah, uh, and you're frightened again. <laughs> you weren't frightened a moment ago, now you're again, you're, you're, it's, it's back. <laughs> it's back. Alright, um, so I'm gonna ask a question then, since I am frightened again, is this thing the source of fear or is it the void on the ground? I need to know so where I can move. Ah, uh, the Fangs of Nightfall counts as the source. Okay. So I'm going to put this in the not good category. Um, uh huh. Mm -hmm. uh, I think play right here. Try and get here and she's gonna as best as she can with the movement she can like kind of put herself between this thing and get with her shield and still just shaking and shaking her head, trying to get herself back and she's just gonna turn a pit and say, Go, hide if you can. Um uh, Go, go, somewhere, not here. And we're going to take two more hot shots at this thing to try to draw his attention to her specifically. Okay. Uh. Also, first off, that bonus action was a uh, Warlord's favor for Pip. So you recover nine and get nine temp points for Pip. Oh? How many? Nine. Oh. Yeah, recover nine, nine temp. And then. And then two shots. Let's see those rolls. Let's see those rolls as soon as I remember which dice I'm using. Uh, I'm, guys, I'm so good at this game. <laughs> Ow. Guys, I'm so good at this game. 23 hits. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Nervous laughter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. <clears throat> and then red. shot number two. That one does not hit. Uh, ten is, does not. But your guns, uh, the the booming noise of your weapon does echo throughout the forest. And you do see the uh, feline machine head uh, turning its attention towards you. <clears throat> Speaking of, as a legendary action, if you're done... I am done. It will shoot uh, with its bow um, at you. 
I don't know why I did this. Anyways, that's a uh, 14 to hit you. 14 misses. Okay. The arrow lands at your feet and uh, a void opens up next to you. Uh, hold on, Nui. Roll for that. Uh... Ooh. Elric. Help us. <laughs> um, I, I gave him a, a, a little wisdom saving throw. Um, not for damage or anything, just to see how brave he's feeling right now. Um... And right now, I have rolled for him. Uh, can you do this? He can, because he's a little guy. He's going to disengage as a bonus action. Um, he starts to move away. But from here, he's going to take a couple more shots at the things of Nightfall. Um, miss. I barely hit. I get to roll all the dice today. No, 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 no. Whoops. Okay. Pekka? Ah, oh, God, I have too many choices. I, I might need some assistance from the group here in deciding what to do. Okay, so... Run away and never come back. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe not that, maybe not that. Um, okay, so plan A, rest restrain the tail snake. Uh, <laughs> probably not the best use of time, but it's an option. Um, plan B, fish Pontifex out of the void and give him a healing potion. Um, plan C, run over to Virian and give her the healing potion. Um, plan D, run the other way around and maybe do some attacky nonsense. Um, plan E, how tall is the void? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um it's ground level. Okay. Um, the, so... the mist, uh, okay, so the, the hole. Uh, where the ground is turned black, it's just where the ground is, uh, with all mm -hmm. its uh, um, unevenness. Uh, the mist that comes out, it's about reaches up to maybe hip height. Okay. Uh, yeah, then maybe Tekka could shorten that run by doing a little pole vault. That that'd be fun. Hmm. Oh man. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. What do you think? Is it most important keeping more people alive? I would think so, right? Going into the void would probably yeah. not be great. No, going into the void is a bad thing. That's why I want to fish. Oh, you want to fish for... Oh, that's right. You have a fishing <laughs> attachment. <Yeah. laughs> you got to fish the frog out. <laughs> <laughs> it's Animal Crossing so... all of a sudden. <laughs> So, if we think that's the best plan of action, I'll, I'll try that. Um, I don't know. It feels like we're more on the retreat. So you should probably keep some people safe that are still up. Yeah, I, okay. I agree with that too. But again, it's <laughs> a tough decision. I don't know what would be best. <laughs> Imagine Matt coming back. And... <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to tell him that you lost Pontifex. <laughs> <laughs> Done the first session, you took care of him. First hour. <laughs> we'll, let's go to the store and get a new one. He'll never know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> so should I roll between fishing Pontifex out or healing Virion with the potion? What do you think? Uh up to you, man. Whatever okay. Tekka wants to do. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna roll then. 
Uh, odd is fishing Pontifex out. Even is uh, supporting variant. That's even. All right. Uh, then Tekka is going to run over. Uh, let's see. Without entering the mist, because mist bad. Let's see. And that will be a dash. Yeah, there's no way to go around that. Uh, and then we'll hand Virion the healing potion. And that is, just to make sure... That is 2d4 plus 2. Uh, and there's not really a lot else tech you can do, so I'm just gonna use another key point for a dodge action. And that will be the end of the turn. Okay. Uh, that brings us to the fangs. Uh, even, odd, odd. Okay. Uh, where's the tail? It's all the way back here. <laughs> the tail. Does the tail have a movement speed? Blithering <laughs> <laughs> speed. Uh, Hmm. I can't do that. Okay, all the stuff is just about. All right, go, go, go. So, um, Virion, uh, it's still yes. trying to shoot you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to jail this die from now on. Is a 16 hit? 16 misses. Okay. Off to jail. Straight to jail. <laughs> does mean... How many spaces do we have? 1, 2, 5. Uh, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This wasn't a very elegant way of doing this, because I guess it ended up behind you somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> like, it was going for your legs, and you stepped away, and then, yeah, the air landed behind you. Uh, are you putting an effect down for this? Oh, are you not seeing it? No. 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 Oh, none of you are seeing it? I I'm see the sure big it's one. really cool. I yeah. didn't realize that none of you oh, are seeing this. I see it. Now that I have mouse over, I see a question mark, but I don't see it. Yeah. It's like a little smoky thing. Yeah, no, it's just... It looks really good on my stream. Oh, is it what I used in Eperon? Oh, maybe. Do I have props that are that old? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen any of those. Oh, well. I'm sorry. Did I leave you like guessing where these things were yes. this whole yes. time? Yes. Yes. I had not yes. realized. I feel it's bad. Okay. I see it on the stream. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah, not watching the stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you don't have to watch a stream. Oh, what is? Thank you. Uh, well, whoops. <laughs> I don't realize you weren't seeing these, but yeah, there's yeah. little thingies um, that I've been putting down. Just, you know what? One day I'm gonna like delete all my props and just start over. <laughs> Get all new ones. Anyways, uh, Brook? Mm hmm. Pip. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Austin? Yeah. Yes, that's oh. me. <laughs> Is there a wisdom save or anything? Uh, you are not next to any of these, so no, you're good. Your fear is oh, gone. Okay. My fear is gone. Uh-huh. I don't agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> um. What? What? What do? Um, hopefully oh, Arma Bastu shows up soon. <laughs> <laughs> True. You know, I think you're right. 
Pip turns Virian into an armor boss too. <laughs> I mean, that's one way. <laughs> uh, oh, right. You have you have a mini, yeah. Oh, um, probably. Let me check. Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You put that first. No one had that I'm gonna put you over here so your initiative seconds. Cool. It's probably gonna try to add its own initiative. Just ignore it and use Virions. Uh, and yeah, what <laughs> what does it feel like for Virion? Big. <laughs> big. <laughs> big. Yeah. And big. I think as soon as Virian's in armor boss too, she's just like gonna look at Pip like, what am I supposed to do with this? And <laughs> <laughs> then be like, oh, more movement speed and runs off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can very easily climb the trees and just sweep Speaking of running off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Heads towards the trees, watches from like <laughs> behind a tree. Okay. Is that it for Pip? Uh, no. He'll he'll also telekinetically m move Tekka out of out of this. <laughs> I, uh, I was wondering thing. if he was gonna pull Tekka or push. <laughs> go go go! <laughs> go go that way. Take that sacrifice. Push. <laughs> okay, now okay. that's it. All right. Um, so, Pip, you, you started to run away and then you turned back uh, just to, to, to keep an eye on the situation. And through the legs of the now really tall Virion, uh, you see the fangs of Nightfall reaching with his free hand uh, for Brook. And uh, kind of grabs him in this uh, very um, probably not comfortable kind of way, grabs him by an arm. Um, Pulls him up a little bit, um, but as he's as the machine is performing the gesture of lifting Brook up, you see that Brook's body is beginning to fall apart into oh. hundreds and hundreds of little pieces. Um, Help! Made of <laughs> <laughs> made of light that scatter in the air for a little bit. And then they begin to head in a particular direction. It's not quite where the wind is blowing them. Uh, the direction being straight. Uh, this way, like that. <laughs> Beautiful air. Uh, then for its movement. Oh god, I don't want to move the entire cone. Uh. Oh, 30 feet, perfect. Oh no. Over here. Um. Virium Bastu. Yes, that's me. Uh, I don't have the sheet, so. Yeah. Oh, you don't? I mean, I have it in my extras page, but oh, okay. I don't have like an external one to. Right. Um, uh, I'm just, just gonna have to screenshot it. Uh. One moment. Uh, Homebrew. Arm a bus to. Uh, I'll just send it to you privately. Okay, okay. Over Discord. Jewelry. Whatever you are this week. <laughs> Here we go. Whatever I am this week. Alright. Uh, okay, okay. Enjoy your new hit point total. Nice. Uh, okay, okay. 
I guess first things first, do I need to make a wisdom save for being next to scary things? Oh, yes. Again. Um, does Spolomorph change your mental stats? It does. All of my okay. stats. I'm, I'm now functionally the, the summer boss, too. Did you just gain wisdom? I just gained wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Beering has more common sense right now than she's ever had in her life. <laughs> what? Yeah? <That's> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just brush it off. Who cares if the ground right. is opening up beneath you and there's purple mist spilling out? You're fine. You're big. Yeah. So I think... What's my speed for you? Um... And, like, there's, like, a bunch of trees around here, right? Uh, yeah, this... Uh, let me pick a different color from pink. Um, like this, yeah. it, it's starting to get a little difficult to see, but this area is all difficult terrain. Although, um, you know what? It's difficult terrain for medium-sized creatures. <laughs> I don't think that would impede your movement. That doesn't, that doesn't okay. sound right. They're all like low bushes, you know? It's yeah. the undergrowth of the jungle. And there's like trees tall enough to climb nearby, right? Sorry? Are like trees like that are tall enough to climb around here, or uh, let is me, it all let pretty make low? This more transparent because I can't see anymore. There are some trees around. Okay. Uh, uh, oof, not here in the central area. They're like. Okay. That's a tree. That's a tree. Okay. No. Yeah, cause I was wondering if there's a way to get to. Uh, effects without touching the ground because I used to mm. this is pretty low lying mm, but doesn't, doesn't look like it that's fine um, so I think in that case it's just gonna lie. um I Julie let me yep let me because it, this is like a full canopy of leaves and branches above you um, mm -hmm. so even though there isn't like a tree on the map right here um, if you can, and I would leave it up to a skill check, but if you could, like, find a vine that would allow you to lower yourself in this general area, I would let it happen. Okay. So what's the... What would you like me to roll for that? Um, you're still assuming, like, a, like a perception check? Okay. And the DC is going to be this... Let's go! Okay. <laughs> I mean, it feels like... You know, you're not a creature of the sea, you're a creature of the jungle. You know this yeah. place so well. Uh, this is you, weird. You know how to find <laughs> your way around. And like, the, yeah, there's a tree next to you that feels sturdy. And, and looking up, you can see that these really uh, thick vines are just dangling down. And there's a couple that are almost directly above Pontifex. Uh, and you know that you could just, uh, with your with your size, you could climb all the way down from them, and you'd be big enough to reach down for Pontifex from there. Uh, that is what we are doing. Yeah, plan formulates uh, in your new yeah <laughs> mind. In my big brain. <laughs> your big brain. Um. So I don't know where I would end up, like height wise, but I got a forty foot climb speed. I don't know if I need to use an action to grab Pontifex, but I'm prepared to dash if I need to. Yeah, the plan is to go down, <laughs> grab Pontifex, uh, and get as high back up as we can. I think this is all possible, but <clears throat> not in 40 feet of movement, because you'd have to climb up and go over and okay, then back yeah. down. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, so with dashing, you could get into position, but not quite close enough to actually get Pontifex. And into position okay. would mean like you're here, but like above. Oh, okay, wait, yeah, I, I have think tokens for that. I think that's still the play because if anything, maybe having a big giant monkey in his face will keep him from snapping Pontifex. Well. Well, <laughs> Oops. like that, but more, more. <laughs> Let me, I'm gonna try one more time. Uh, uh. 
Let's be perfectly centered. Ah, oh, yes. It's perfect. <laughs> oh, a bit too high up. No. Maybe. We'll see. I think that's my turn because I don't think I have any bonus actions. Okay. Uh, where are we? That. 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 Okay. The fangs is going to. One, two, three. Um, shoot at Felric. Whoops. That's too many dice. It's not an advantage. <clears throat> Still hits. Go, oh, Felric. He doesn't have you guys as hit points. <laughs> Don't say that. Not that not that, <laughs> that mattered. <laughs> Uh, he's okay in the sense that visually he's not hurt, uh, and I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> but he does, like, you hear him just whimpering <clears throat> as an air ends up, like, stuck in him. <coughs> ah, my voice. Tekka! Um, Viren is a very big primate all of a sudden. <laughs> Whoa! Let's go! <laughs> um. Yeah, Tekka has been running a lot, and only now uh, finds a moment just to breathe and like refresh, like the kind of damage, and yeah, trying to understand the kind of damage he got from this creature. Uh, and he's going to use wholeness of body to regain twenty-four health points. Whoa! What? Wha just like that? Wha bang! Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> It's a breathing technique. I don't know, it sounds like a shitty <laughs> to me. <laughs> Ow, 24. Oh. Okay. And then, uh, yeah. Seeing what happened with Brooke, just like lights now just going in the direction, uh, Tekka is going to chase whatever is happening there. It's going to end this turn there. Okay, is that is that everything? That is everything. Bip. Viren oh. has taken really well to what you've done to her. Excellent. <laughs> I see her going for Pontifex and she seems to be just a little bit too slow. I mean, what is the rigging of a ship if not a ocean jungle? Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> desperately searching through my features. <laughs> well, huh? How far away am I? Pip will take two steps forward and two actually, steps, you know what? Ten feet. Yep. Yeah. Pip has big, big, uh, <laughs> big, big strides. Um, Pip's going to take one of his firecrackers out of his bag and chuck it. Over, 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 well, he's going to light it first. <laughs> <laughs> and then chuck it over here. Firecrackers. Yeah, got this those from the from toy the shop, colony? I think. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, nice! Just to try and distract the, uh, the big boy from Thanos snapping Pontifex. Good call. Uh, what did you say, ends up? Somewhere over here. Okay. Um, have I have I told you anything about them? Nope. 
just, just firecrackers. firecrackers. <laughs> okay. There are no stats associated with these firecrackers. <laughs> Gnomish firecrackers. Well, they make uh, a really loud, like, popping noise, and it's like continuous. Just boom, 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 boom. Uh, no one near the intensity of Virion's gun, uh, but a very, very similar kind of noise, which the Fangs of Nightfall seems to very much have associated with a weapon firing. Uh, its head immediately snaps towards the firecrackers. It's gonna go hide behind this tree. <laughs> That's right Enter. in the line of sight of where it's looking. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do a legendary action at the end of Pip's turn. Uh, the tail is still useless, so we're gonna... Oh, wrong die. We're gonna pick a target to shoot towards, which is Tekka. Um, Hi. Tekka wasn't... <laughs> dodge. No, he wasn't dodging. <clears throat> Not dodging. Was on uh, your last turn, but apparently Falric was the turn. <laughs> it's 23 to hit. That hits. The arrow, the arrow does no. this many. It's 26 points of psychic damage. Which is halved. Uh, and then it takes its turn. Huh? And first... We roll, or it's nightmare breath. Doesn't come back. It's not a breath. Let's call it breath in my notes. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> it's really annoying that there's nothing in melee range to hit. Can you guys approach? <laughs> Maybe he should have killed everything. <laughs> um because its attention is on the firecrackers, it is going to move that way. Oh, you deleted the drawings. Was it over here? Styles? Yeah. Uh, and sort of like stomps on them. And once they... Once they stop the firecracking... Uh, it is going to shoot at one of you. I'm going to roll for it. So, stack again! Uh, uh, that's 15 to hit! 15? That's not it. Huh? It doesn't get multi attack on a bow attack, so that's it for its turn. Oh, I didn't move the thing. Oop! Ah. Uh, Next, and then Virion. Alright, uh, we're going to continue with this plan. We're going to Spider-Man climb down this vine. We're going to grab Pontifex like a little baby. <laughs> and we're going to pull him up. How's he looking? You dead? Um, How yeah, much my bastard needs left? to roll a medicine check. Okay, <laughs> so... I'm better than Virian is. <laughs> He's fine. <laughs> Your new mind has no concept of what Pontifex even is. You just vaguely remember that he has, he doesn't breathe, maybe? So it's fine okay. if he doesn't, because that's that's just normal for him. Okay, we're just gonna... Talk him up in the branches nice and safe. 
<laughs> just dangling like bent over a branch. I just like find a nice little crook we can put him on and just like put a little leaf on top of him to cover him up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And I'm going to assume that was full movement action to do that. Uh. That, that would be the case, but you'd have, like, more movement. Like, it is an action okay. to pick him up. Okay, in that case, I'm going to use whatever movement I have left to move you can closer be the right to this guy. Yeah. You can be on top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in fact, you could just hop down if you want. No, I think I want to go for the off the corner wrestling move next turn, so. <laughs> yeah, <Okay>. let's go! <laughs> that oh. will be my turn then. Uh huh? That ends Virion's turn, so the Fangs of Nightfall gets to take uh, a bow attack. Whoops, I rolled before rolling on who's getting it. A uh, pip that is 25 to hit you. Um, I'm not behind a tree. Uh, oh yeah, no, I guess the line of sight is broken. That's fair, that's a good point. Hmm, okay. Hit him! <laughs> Hit him again! <laughs> 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 well, the choices are... Uh, 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 uh. Hit, hit, hit the small guy. I'll hit, hit the tech guy again, apparently. Oh. That's um, 18 to hit. Uh, that is exactly the AC. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> 27 psychic damage. Becca! Ouch. Okay. Uh, Elric. Felric is looking around frantically. Uh, he's looking at the last spot where he saw Virion. And then he's looking up at the Armabasu. And then back at the spot where he saw Virion. And then back at the <laughs> Armabasu. Uh, and, and Virion, he, he's looking up at you. Like, he'd like advice. But <laughs> <laughs> it's a little beyond you right now to, like, to give ta tactical orders. <laughs> um, what do you do? Uh, Virion? Um, I think even without having the wherewithal to have <clears throat> tactical orders, I think she's going to, as best as she can in her current state, just like motion for him to hide if he can. You point at a tree that is directly behind him? And he climbs mm. on it. Uh, Alright. That was, that was Felric's turn. Tekka? Uh, yeah, as Tekka was running towards the small pieces of light is probably now out of sight. Uh, Tekka is just now enraged and looks towards the Fangs of Nightfall again. Uh, I'm going to pull, pull Vault over the little void mist and run right towards them. Wow. Uh, yeah. And we're gonna just uh, start smashing here. Let's see what we do. Seventeen is not enough. Okay, let's try again. Uh, what are you hitting it with? Uh, this is just a core staff. Okay. Yeah. Your your metal instrument just bounces right off of uh, the body of the, the fangs of nightfall. Uh, Twice. And then I'm going to do flurry of blows to do two unarmed strikes. Okay. Uh, 
where your quarter staff mm -hmm. lets you down, you resort to your knuckles. Exactly. There we go. Uh, Twenty-one hits. Okay, let's try something here. Uh, it needs to roll a Constitution saving throw. Mm -hmm. It's a sixteen. Oh, it's so close. Okay, oh. no, nope, nothing happens. Oh, that would have been amazing. Oh. So upset. I, I can't use my inspiration on that, right? <laughs> <laughs> the reverse. Wish. Oh! I have an inspiration that I got a while back because I did a recap. Uh, I, had uh -huh. never, I had never planned on using it uh, like to power up in my monsters. Uh, you can use this as a reroll for the night at uh, the Thanks <gasps> of Nightfall. Oh, oh it's a my god! That's so is it, kind. It's oh. in your in your hands. Oh god! Okay, here we go. Roll low, roll low. That's pretty low. What's the total? Uh, I'm not gonna that? give you the total because I don't want to give away what the stat okay. actually is. But uh, I will it's tell a DC you. Fifteen. Fifteen. It is. Yeah. Uh, indeed, a failure. Okay. <gasps> nice. Ooh. The target is stunned until the end of Tekka's next turn. <coughs> Thank you! <laughs> uh, you're welcome, but like, I'm just sitting here thinking, what until the end of... There's, there's this days is... where I'm like, monks aren't too good, and then I see Tekka destroy my monsters, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, right! <laughs> uh, and there's... Um... I need to roll damage for that hit, because I didn't even do that. Uh, hold on. <laughs> do -da, do -da. <laughs> you got it, thank you. <laughs> and that's damage, and then there's the other fist. Wabam. I appear to have run out of ink. Oh no. Um, 26 hits. Struggling right. to write down the hit points, but oh, fine. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, that's eight. Okay. Uh, Tekka. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let me think about how that would work. Um, where your uh, your quarterstaff could have managed to make a dent into this metal body, uh, you reach with your fingers. And you find the spot where the, the the various plates of metal have like a sufficient gap for you to just stick your fingers in and pull away a piece of metal and then shove your whole hand inside of its essentially belly and just scramble all the metal insides that you can get your hands on. Uh, and the entire machine just comes to a sudden halt. And then wow. you hit it, All right. and you kick it, and you hit it again, just as hard as you can. Um, I'm pretty sure the stun the means they also don't get legendary actions, right? Because, yeah, that wouldn't make sense. In incapacitated, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're moving on to Pip? Uh, Pip, peering from behind this tree, sees Tekka reach in and scramble its innards. And then this gives Pip an idea. Uh, it's stunned. Mm -hmm. It automatically fails strength saves. Yes. So Pip is pulling it closer towards him. Five feet. And then Pip darts out from behind cover. Gets uh, under under its belly. Okay. Where where Tekka was messing with it. Pip pulls out the snow globe. Shoves it in the in the crevice up inside its body and goes, <laughs> which Virian you take to mean I really hope this does what I think it will <laughs> and casts remove curse on the snow globe. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, 
I was not expecting that. No. Oh. <laughs> what a move! Okay. Help. <laughs> it was really great or really awful. The music stopped. Um, Pip, you've been holding on to this snow globe for a very long time. There was a day, not any particular specific day, but there was a day when um, you figured that you thought you had it within you the knowledge and the power to perhaps do something about it. Uh, to your understanding, there's someone inside of this snow globe, someone who is alive, leading a life, whatever small life you can lead inside of uh, such an item. You were never quite sure, though, whether to go through with it. You didn't really know what would happen, after all. The optimistic side of you would just hope that it would... Uh, release this woman from its uh, from her prison. Ah, uh, but you couldn't really know for a fact. You consulted with Pontifex, you consulted with Talix back when he was still with you. Um, you even asked uh, for Squeak's opinion. Squeak was never particularly helpful. <laughs> right now you just cling on to this idea, because that's the only idea you really have. You saw Tekka managing to break this thing from the inside and the only way you know to do the same thing is to pray and remove the curse of the snow globe the fangs of nightfall shatters into thousands of small glistening metal pieces <clears throat> that scatter all across the jungle in an area of just uh in a radius of dozens and dozens of feet. Everywhere where the uh, landscape had turned black and purple, it is restored, but you don't really have the time to just admire um, the, 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 the beauty of the scenery returning to its uh, uh, normal, natural state because you feel this chill, this cold, deep in your bones. It's sudden, just this gust of incredible cold. Uh, that for a moment you think that this is what death feels like. There's there's nothing else you could compare it to. You've never been in. You never felt a, a cold this deep before. All around you, it begins to snow, much like these pieces of metal are falling uh, in an air around you. So is snow, pure white, cold, kind of beautiful in a way. In front of you, um, and with uh, Viren basically landing on top, uh, is a little house. It uh, has destroyed everything that was uh, around it. This entire area here, the rocks, the, uh, <clears throat> the flowers, the grass, whatever uh, small shrubbery was in the way, it's all gone, crushed under this building as if it just landed here from, from the sky. If it wasn't for its circumstances, um, <laughs> it would be just a nice little house. Somehow surrounded by snow in just this patch of the jungle. And after a few seconds of just stillness and silence as the snow ceases to fall and it's now just in an area on the ground you watch as the door opens and that's where we'll take a break oh, wow i was not expecting this at all <laughs> what a power move wow i was really hoping it would do that <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I was all out of ideas. Okay, if I was say if you didn't do that, I was gonna take its bow next turn since it couldn't stop me from doing it. But <laughs> this, works, this works better, Yoink. I think. <laughs> well, I look forward to seeing your next character, Dennis. <laughs> Ooh, I have a good one. <laughs> <clears throat> you remembered 
I'm just doing it right there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Well, originally I thought I was like, there's a hole where its tail was. I can shove it up its butthole <laughs> and then do it. <laughs> I can shove it up. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> wow. Take it, uh, mini. Austin. Okay. <laughs> I really hope that, the, that who we released isn't worse. <laughs> you know what? We'll burn that bridge once we get to it. Oh my god. How long of a break? Five minutes, ten minutes? I'm gonna need 15. Okay. Oh boy. 15. <laughs> oh. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. All right, yep. see you. See you in 15. Well. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes. So. The door to this small house opens. It creaks a little bit on its metal hinges, and you see this pale hand very gently grabbing the edge of the door and pulling it back and uh, you have all with the possible exception of Viren seen this woman before in the snow globe uh, but now that you get to see her not through water not through glass uh, and especially not in uh, as a little miniature uh, you can you can see far more details than you could before. You can see that her skin is uh, is pale, but it's also dotted with these beautiful, symmetrical, and colorful patterns. They're they're faint. They're not really intense colors that are particularly um, disjointed from the natural color of her skin. But it's like a very elaborate body tattoo. Uh, every inch of her skin is just <clears throat> this intricate uh, uh, assortment of uh, of lines and dots, and um, it they remind you a little bit uh, of actually history check. Uh, and I'm trying to remember this one does not apply to Virion, so only Pip and Tekka can do one. Mm. Yeah, I'm pretty confident this was before Virun. Yeah, this is ringing zero bells for me, so I'm pretty confident you're also correct. Okay. Becca, there was one particular occasion where your party was resting in, uh, in, in uh, Talix's uh, magical tower. Uh, and one night, uh, you had a, a brief encounter with a moth, a giant fluffy moth. Uh, that was just exceptionally colorful. And the the colors and the pattern on the wings of that particular moth, uh, they are very clearly reminiscent of the patterns on this woman's skin. Um, oh, okay. Her hair is the color of the snow. It's long and straight, and it just cascades on her shoulders. Um, with her free hand, she holds on to it, to, twisting the strands between her fingers, just cautiously looking left and right and left again, up at the sky, at the canopy of leaves above you. And you can see, like, the uh, she's prudent, but also her eyes are filled with wonder. You can tell that she has been in that snow globe for a very very long time. When she makes eye contact with you, Pip, she... You see, she recognizes you. She has seen your face uh, almost every day. And as the two of you are just staring at one another, and the seconds pass, she eventually cracks a bit of a, a weak but sincere smile. And she says, thank you. But 
not in Plurnan. Uh, this, uh, she speaks in Etarian. And none of you are really fluent in Etarian yet, but you've had so many encounters with them, and usually it was Talix who would translate between you and them, but you've started to pick up some words, you know, how to say hello and please and thank you. So you understand the meaning of that word, Pip. Um, and so does Tekka. Pip uh, just nods and gives a little bit of a, a nervous wave. Uh, and as she takes one step towards you, she, she suddenly comes to a stop. There is a... Uh, it's not the wind that picks up speed, but there's still this movement in the air that catches her attention and uh, everyone else's. The bits of metal that have scattered in the snow, they're moving. They lift up into the air, they begin to collect themselves uh, into this, this ball of debris, and then, much like Brooks remains, they begin to slowly float to the south. The woman mm. watches this with curiosity and awe. Oh, hey, I have a, I have a thing for her. Oop. That mini is super detailed. She must be important. <laughs> And then there is this creaking overhead. The woman <laughs> immediately steps away, and then the entire house collapses under the weight of Virion's new form. She comes just crashing down through the roof. A couple of walls fall. The whole thing is destroyed. I don't know if it's possible for Armabasu to look embarrassed, but... <laughs> so I will say, actually, uh, probably as that's happening, or just about before it happens, um, before anything else, Virion's going to go back up in the tree and grab Pontifex to bring him down. Mm -hmm. And just kind of put him on the ground, like, in front of everyone, just kind of, like, nudge him with her Big armor boss your hand. And then crash. <laughs> <laughs> and then crash. <laughs> um Pip will drop polymorph. And uh Pip looks at this newcomer and holds up one finger. There it is. And then runs over to Pontifex, pulls out uh, one of the healing potions that he had made back in the the kitchen in the tower, and starts pouring it into his mouth. Okay, roll for the potion. <coughs> <coughs> okay. Eight. All right. Pontifex does open his eyes. He's back with you. Um, we're not gonna like role play as him, but I will say that he did um, not interact with a stranger during this time. Hmm. Is he racist? <laughs> no, like he didn't see I him. I mean, yes, but... Um, then Pip just moves back. Um, after like a, a moment, I think Pip would realize that we can't understand each other, but he does know of someone who knows Atarin and pulls out Orm, and just holds the book in his hands. 
um, that's yeah. next to Ekka. Uh, you, you open up Orm to a <clears throat> set of blank pages. Um, Pip will hand <clears throat> off Orm to Tekka, because Pip can't talk to Orm right now. <laughs> oh, right. That's a good point. <laughs> Orm, I will need your help. Yeah, change. I think we're. Oof. This map is very colorful. If the text here is hard to read, we're gonna swap to like the neutral wooden one. Ah, uh, let me see. This woman speaks a tongue, and we need you to translate. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, um, at this, uh, there is going to be a, a word in, in Italian written on the pages that, um, it's a basic enough word I also would understand, which is simply for hello. Uh, and Taki will have the book to make sure that uh, the woman can see it and you see her just leaning forward a tiny bit and squinting and then eyes wide in surprise and then she looks back up at you. Ask her her name. Uh, after more ink collects on the pages uh, into what you presume to be the, the, the question, um, the woman speaks and says, Nui. Which Worm helpfully writes down for you in the exact spelling. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Tekka will, with his other hand, will point himself and say, Tekka. And she seems to be getting the gist of what's going on here, and she actually kind of kind of giggles in delight at this. Um, and when she speaks again, you see, uh, well, you hear, you, you understand that she says, hello, Tekka, and then Orm still translates, translates that. <laughs> uh, so there's like a complete log of your conversation. <laughs> oh my gosh. <clears throat> uh, immediately, she begins to, to speak again, uh, and, and you see Orm um, almost struggling to to keep up. Um, and they're pretty much the questions that that you would have expected from her. As soon as I ah, here it is. We had to fight something guarding this jungle. This one freed you. I do not know how. I'm pointing to Bip. This is a jungle. Do you know the land of Ladaria? <clears throat> Uh, she nods at this. You are not in the peninsula. We are much deeper in the land. She seems to reflect upon this and then just gives an understanding nod. I do not understand what happened to you. What do you remember? Roll an insight check. Okay. Um, all three of you can. Virion, <clears throat> Felric has found his way back to your side, yeah. making sure that you're always between uh, him and Pontifex. <laughs> uh, he yeah. hands you back the remaining ammunition. 
<laughs> um, and he just whispers, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Not with me that. I, I hope I helped a little bit. You did. I, I, did, I didn't think that thing could be killed. Are you alright? I know he shot at a lot of us. It was a bit chaotic. I got the worst headache of my life, but I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm fine, I think. Yeah. Just, uh, take a minute. I think we all need it right now. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm taking a minute. I'm just, I'm gonna hey. watch this. Oh. Quit whispering over there. I am not done with you. <laughs> <laughs> he immediately shuts up. Virion just kind of like pats him on the shoulder. <laughs> A little reassuring. Um. So, as for her... Um, here's what Orm... <clears throat> oh, wait, first, the inside checks. Uh, both uh, Pip and Tech, I can just see this... Um, Forcefully suppress the hinge of of anger, but you can see just for a moment the the fists clenching. Uh, so so does uh, so does Virion. Um, for just a moment, fists clenching, just muscles tensing up. But she she's quick to relax. She seems to just be trying to control herself. Uh, and I'm gonna say Pip on a twenty. That doesn't feel. That doesn't seem like it's in a. It's in a deception, deceptive manner. Um, but more like she's trying to be proper. Did you did you say that what that was in reaction to? Uh to Tekka asking uh, what is the what last thing you remember? Her? Yeah, what happened? To mm. you? Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> That is dreadful. It should not have happened. Kind of shakes her head at the um, towards the the end of her explanation, and um, as if just forcefully shutting down some thoughts from her mind. Um, she then says something. And uh, uh, on the page, you read... <laughs> yeah, I think Tekka will just nod to Orm, just <laughs> because he doesn't want Orm to translate <laughs> whatever uh, Tekka would say. Um... I sense the subject hurts you. You do not need to speak further. Um, Nui speaks and Orm translates. And at this she, she smiles seems to take comfort in, in that. I hope that is a relief. There is one thing you should know. We do not have the time for long introductions. 
you yourself saw that collection of light pass through as Tekka points to the south. That same thing happened to one of our friends. And we need to know where he is. You are free to join us. As this is a strange and unknown place, I'm sure. Yeah, Tekka will look to Virion mm -hmm. and Pontifex if they have anything to add. Um, if she doesn't mind, does she want to tell us who that man was? It might be useful for us to know. That man that trapped you, does he have a name? She she grits her teeth a little uncomfortably, but then she says, Onomander. I have never heard such a name. So he should be far away. And we also know to look out for him now. Should that name come up? I... Do you need food or water? She shakes her I head. I do not know. Okay. Before we go after Brooke, we do need to recover a little bit. I know I don't have much more fight left to me right now. I can't bear the thought of waiting, not knowing what has happened to him. We'll do him no good if we die on the way there. Or when we're immediately confronted. I'll climb one of the trees, be on the lookout, see if I can see any signs. You can take your time, rest. I think an hour or so just to catch ourselves up, rest, and then we'll go. Uh, yeah, take a look to Pip for any like affirmation. Um, Pip has been very distraught about Brooke not being here. Um, but he, he nods at Virian. Once we're in better shape, we'll go after him. I, I promise I have no intention of leaving <clears throat> anyone behind. Fine. Nui. Do you have any other questions that you need answered right now? <laughs> to me, it seems you have been very patient. Unfairly so. She, she smiles kindly. I do not mind. You, you settle down for your uh, 
short rest. Uh, Tekka, onto a tree, I believe you said. Yeah. Hmm? I'm writing this in the wrong notes. Ah, here it is. Does she have kind eyes? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Are you looking at her eyes? Yeah. Okay. You're like. As she sits down on, like, one of these uh, uh, rocks, um, she is very proper. Um, she's just making sure, she, like, she dusts off the top of the rock and she collects her legs together. Um, when, when she looks at you, she, she smiles and you can see that her eyes seemingly have all these patterns to them. Like, you lean forward to see more details, and you can just see so much going on in the eyes that, from a distance, they just look like they're this light color, kind of bluish. Uh, but the more you look at them, the more you can see just all these little details. Um, it's like it's like the most uh, um, elaborate pattern that you just ever seen on anything. Pip is caught staring and looks away quickly. <laughs> um, and then she begins to sing and at first <laughs> at first she actually has to clear her throat a couple of times it seems like she hasn't done this in a while but then it's this beautiful melody You've heard the Atara sing before. Uh, the, you've heard the Atara Va singing in the past. Uh, when they, for the first time, welcomed outsiders into their own home uh, to, to speak, to, to, to parlay. Um, and back then it was this chorus, but right now it's just one voice uh, that just... It's so strange. Minutes ago, you were fighting for your life, and... Brook is gone! Just destroyed into countless pieces, but... Somehow... Somehow... If only for a few minutes... You leave it all behind, and you feel at peace, and every single one of you falls asleep. Everyone? Sorry, guys. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> even even uh, Virian. I'm looking. I'm looking at. Yeah. Uh... Huh. Magic yeah. Technically, technically, yeah. That's. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because it's like not actually sleep. Yeah. So I'm. It's super chill. Yeah, it's unconscious. Yes. You know what? Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, it affects everybody. I mean, if it's just unconscious, it's unconscious. Yeah, yeah, it's unconscious. It's unconscious. Okay. And then moments later, you jolt awake. Uh, uh, Tekka barely holding onto the branch um, where you were you were seated earlier, and and then. The, it seems like you must have dozed off, and that's not too uncommon for you. We just felt like it was very quickly. Um, all of you have gained the benefits of a short rest? Whoa. Oh. Oh, wow. The song reaches its end, and uh, you're pretty sure you missed the majority of it? You may or may not feel a little embarrassed about it, but... Is this like Jigglypuff from the Pokemon anime? Just like <laughs> scrolling all over our faces? <laughs> there is uh, no it... scrolling on your faces. Okay. Question. Yeah. Before we short rested, I wanted to burn my last two Warlords' favor to heal myself a little more. Oh, Can yeah. I do that before? Yeah, okay. go ahead. Cool. It wasn't cool. like instantaneously falling out yeah. of Yeah. 
I would like those extra 18 hit points. Yeah. Thank you. That's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. It's times like these I love being a warlock. <laughs> <laughs> Some days it sucks, and some days it's great! Yeah. <clears throat> Pip, uh... Pip is going to show Nui his rock collection. If you just spill out the rocks on the rock, <laughs> you sort this them. This is a bonding exercise. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, she, the way she looks at these, um, it's it's not in in surprise at all. She has seen you take out these rocks countless times before. <laughs> <That's> um, <right>. and, <laughs> <laughs> And she even, like, she reaches for one, pauses, waits for your reaction, and if you don't stop her, she begins to collect some of them, and then she tosses them back onto the rock in the exact same way you do whenever you're trying to get some kind of answer to uh, some question that you have. Um, she has seen you do this so many times that she has picked up the same motions, even though she doesn't quite seem to get the exact purpose so when she once she tosses them and she watches how they roll and which side they flip on she looks at you to see your interpretation of it huh uh pip's eyes get a little wide in recognition of what she's trying to do and uh then we'll we'll collect the rocks up again he puts out uh three of them in a triangle which is the uh the um the Azurite, the Eye Agate, and... Or no, it's the Azurite, the Malachite, and the Turquoise are in a triangle. And then mm -hmm. it's the Eye Agate right in the middle. Um, and... Um, he's going to... He's going to pull out a little clump of his hair and hand it over to... Who has the book now? Uh, Tekka, I would imagine. Tekka? Is Tekka... Still here, or he he went up to climb um, a tree. Yeah, I mean he can be down. I, yeah. Okay, we'll say this is at a time where he's down here. Mm -hmm. Um, hands it over to Tekka, and then Tekka, you hear in your head. Um, could could you get Orm out and and uh have Orm ask her if there's a question that she wants to ask about about what we're about to do. Uh, yeah, I mean, I imagine... Yeah, Tech uh, will do so. Ip uh, asks this question of the rocks uh, in his own way. Is uh, is 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 Brooke going to be okay if we leave soon? As you move and toss the rocks around. All of your favorite ones gather on their most beautiful side up. Uh, you take this to be a sign of good fortune. It grins and nods to Nui. She smiles too. It's very much not a grin. Um, she has one of those like really practiced the soft smiles. Hip is going to give her a rock. Which one? He will let her pick. Whoa! Oh. Ah. 
send me the list again. I will send you the list when I no. find it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll pick one afterwards. Um, I'll also need you to, but uh, I guess you can get to it later. But you he to will not. Short rest for pond he will leave for... some in his pouch. Okay. There are some <laughs> too crucial to be given away. <laughs> okay. I was wondering. <laughs> some are too crucial. <laughs> the load bearing rocks. <laughs> the load bearing rocks. Ah, uh, still have nightmares of the load bearing door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeesh. <laughs> That was deadlier than the hags. I mean, <laughs> not for me. No, you were fine. I mean, eventually. Got better. Oh, better. <laughs> There's the list of acceptable rocks. I, I like that you mark down which ones are Pip's favorites. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a piece of coal. Um, um but as she's as she's looking at these mm -hmm. rocks, Pip Pip is just curious about this person cuz he, he cuz she she just he just feels some sort of kinship with her in some way and is going to take out the gem of seeing and look at her through it. Okay. As she's reaching for um, the smooth, light pink oval rock, um, and like she plucks it and looks back at you for confirmation, like she points at herself. Uh, uh, doesn't even, you don't even need Ormer to understand that she's like asking, like, this is for me. Um, and as you're, you're looking at this, but you're not really looking at her. You're looking at something that is on her shoulder. That you're only seeing through the gemstone uh, because you're seeing this massive moth that is just resting on her um, it slowly climbs up on top of her head and flaps its wings almost like it's stretching them uh, the moth is as big as uh, um, like twice the size of her own head uh, just from the massive wingspan uh, and the patterns on the wings of this one moth match exactly what the, what Nui has on her skin. Pip speaks moth. <laughs> I Pip. I guess. Pip flaps <laughs> gently. <laughs> You're looking which, which... like slightly above the eyes of this woman and you start like just flapping your arms and making yeah, Pip just crosses his arms and flaps gently <laughs> which means hello friend the, the the moth immediately climbs down Nui's back like hiding behind it oh he leaves behind this shimmering trail like little sparkles in the air that just fade away quickly. Pip does nod to Nui when she asks for the uh, light pink rock. Okay. Um, yeah, she, she takes it. She holds it in both hands. Uh, is everyone ready with the short rest preparations? My short rest is done. All good. Remember Pontifex, uh, Austin? Never mind. I'm not all good. <laughs> but we, you don't have to do this right away. Um, anything else to talk about a roleplay before heading out? Uh, I think during the journey, Tech of Love was uh, stern talking to, to Felric, but. Other than that, <laughs> Why? What, what does he tell him? The terms of our agreement was that you would give all ammunition. He, and you he, have betrayed our trust. 
briefly glances at Virion and then swallows and says, Yeah, okay, so I kept some. I didn't give up all of it, but I didn't shoot you in the back. I, I, it, our Vir life was in danger. Virion just cuts him off like, I give it back to him. No, I had some in my pocket. I said I would give it back to you if I thought you might need it. And we needed it. Uh, Tekka's going to do an inside check on Virion. Because he is worried that he is, uh, she is just trying to protect him. Inside check versus Virion's, uh, you know, relevant charisma skill. Of course. Okay. <laughs> she she's persuasive. Uh-huh. She's very persuasive, dang. <laughs> yeah, I'm impressed. 19 charisma, baby. <laughs> this part is not used to high charisma characters. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Varian, I do not understand <laughs> why. Because why we're would walking. You do this? Because we're walking in the danger? Would you rather I leave someone undefended? I would want you to tell us if you were so opposed to it. I told you my intentions from the beginning that should I think we need it, then I would give it back, which is what I did. For as much as you speak on forgiveness and this, you are very quick to pass judgment in this case. These rifles have injured so many. <laughs> How do you forgive the rifles? How much do you know about the war, Tekka? Little. I know little of Plurna at all. Uh, then I suggest you... spend some time before this. We can talk later if you want a history lesson. you keep justifying violence with the past, the future will only hurt more people. And yeah, Tekka will just walk away and head south. Irian is visibly holding her tongue. Uh, after a short silence, Felrico just looks up at her and says, Thanks. Of course. I, I can't I wait to something. get out of here. Yeah. Um, so, sorry about your buddy. He's... Uh, we haven't met for very long. Strange circumstances. That it's not his fault. He doesn't know. There's a long history to explain. Now is not the time for it. Oh, I meant the one who disappeared, but oh, sorry that, about that, that too. too. Sorry. It's it's been a it's been a long day. But thank you. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, you continue traveling through the jungle. Um, following, trying to go in as much of a straight um, uh, path as you can, just where you saw um, two different um, trails of uh, sparkling uh, um, lights heading towards 
Uh, and every once in a while you have to go around trees and various obstacles. Uh, but luckily, I, you don't have to travel too far um, before... Well, before uh, Felric speaks up and says, Guys, we're actually, um... We're almost there. At... Uh, where I work. At my camp. Um... It, it's right where we're headed. Would you rather us, uh... Take a detour, take you there first. And that way you don't need to join us if... You'd no, no, not. that's that's what I'm saying. We're going there. It's the same way. Then have you ever seen anything like those lights? Um, I've so sort of. I've seen people torn into pieces, and and uh. Hardly anything left behind. Again, sometimes. Yeah, dropped an item or two. Usually, though, they just... The, the lights, they just disperse. They don't really go anywhere. What do you mean, only sometimes? Only some people? No, no, no. Everybody gets... Ha, ha. Well, I've only seen two of my buddies get killed by, by the machine, but everybody who has seen that happen has said the exact same story. They get torn apart. There's nothing left of them. Maybe whatever they were holding. I've heard enough. Let's keep moving. Take back uh, um, your minis. Oh. In him. I'm gonna I'm gonna give Pontifex to you, Austin. <laughs> he's, he's in your hands. Uh, oh, oops! I'm still I'm still white. Ah. <laughs> uh. Okay. Uh, eventually, you begin to come across uh, some tree stumps. Uh, signs of uh, humanoids uh, having left their mark uh, on this jungle. And then... The destruction uh, that you're finding gives way to... Um, the creation instead. Things. Buildings. Well, to a degree. You come across ruins, not brand new gnome-sized constructions, but um, torn down old weathered stone buildings that um, there's hardly anything left of them, just the traces of the bases of walls, uh, occasionally part of a rooftop that has managed to survive this long. And then, signs of, th of something newer. Uh, the majority of you have seen these previously. Um, tracks. You've seen train tracks, uh, but these are smaller, but obviously the same uh, kind, they fulfill the same kind of purpose. And they, um, they lead in various directions. There's many uh, the crossroads. Uh, some of them lead into these buildings whenever they are built, uh, the, the ruined ones, uh, uh, whenever they are built uh, into the ground and they head downward. You see signs uh, of, uh, yeah, there's a few tents here and there. Um, and the place is otherwise empty and quiet. Uh, Felric run... Uh, Begins to run forward and then pauses and looks back at the rest of you. Ah, uh, that's my tent over there. Can I, can I, can I, can I go check it out? 
go. He runs off. Uh, he's not too far from you. It's like maybe 40 feet away. And he runs in and then back out. And then into the couple of ones that are still there. And he... He looks very much sad and, and worried. He begins to pick up a few things that seem to be in the tent. Uh, a backpack that you figure is his. Uh, he packs a couple of things and meekly makes his way back to, to you guys and chuckles nervously and says, <laughs> Ah, I think I've been left behind. Everyone else is gone already. They, they probably thought I was, I, was, <laughs> I was dead. Which, to be fair, I also thought I was. Um, so... I don't want to be here anymore. Um, am I... am I free to go? As far as I'm concerned, you're never a prisoner. Okay, <laughs> good, good. Um, but uh, be before I leave... Look, I really hate this place. Just, we, with all my heart. I would rather be anywhere else than here right now, but... You guys kind of saved my skin. So, uh, I have a feeling about it is going to be perceived, but you want me to stick around until, I, I guess, you find out what happened to, to your friend? I, um, <laughs> I'm offering. I'll leave it to you. I mean, I wouldn't want to drag anyone unwilling or that make people nervous around. If you wish to stay here, you may do so. Hide. Stay safe. I know for me, if, personally, if there's one thing that would help me a lot right now, and she'll take out her ammunition case, which is very empty. Just kind of count out. I only have a few shots left. If you have anything that would fit this uh, pistol... I'd appreciate it. Felric glances at the rest of the group, uh, makes eye contact with Pontifex, and just recoils a little bit and says, "Yeah, yeah, okay. This is this is how I'll help you. Ah, uh, give you. Um, I can share some, and then I'll be on my way. That's 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 okay with you." Grim just looks to the rest of the party for their input on that. What should we watch out for? You know this pl place better than us. Uh, as Felric is beginning to to um, just sort through his ammo, he uh, clears his throat and swallows heavily and says, "Well, um, the the, the place used to be fine at first. Ah, uh, there was the one." You know, the one machine, and uh, we worked to kill it, and then we thought it was going to be it, and then things got really crazy. So, um, uh, I, I guess everything is just really scary. Like, at, at times, you think you see things, and they're not really there, and nobody else sees them, but it's, it's always something terrifying. Like, like it's your worst... And then he, he pauses, like, just for a very long time before he says a word. Ah, you know, nightmares. And he felt like the really long wait for that word was a little unnecessary. He looked around nervously and then just nervously chuckles. Begins to hand Virion some ammunition. Uh, you have two kinds, right, Virion? Just the one. You just have the, qu the one? Yeah, oh, the yeah, because you don't have a rifle. Nope, right, right, right. just a pistol. Okay, that's correct. Uh, so he can spare... No, no. Nice. He can spare 13 bullets. Okay. That won't fit your gun. I... Nice. Uh, and as he's counting them out and he's looking for like loose 
bullets in his pockets. <laughs> <laughs> um, he he makes eye contact with Tekka for a moment and says, I, I, You know, uh, I'm probably going to be considered a traitor to my country for uh, taking you guys here or saying anything about this place. And... Uh, <clears throat> In terms of our laws, I am required to tell you that you shouldn't get anywhere near that mine over there. And he very much points out uh, uh, this large round metal door on one side of like, um, sort of like a cliffside, uh, not particularly tall. Um, he, he points it out and then he says again, I'm supposed to tell you that you should not go there because Eka immediately in hears there. in his mind we should go in there <laughs> we should go in there first <laughs> uh, Viria nods and she's like we'll make sure that if uh, it's ever brought up you right. definitely okay. told us for sure certainly mm -hmm. and we, you you have our, our word my word that um, we'll listen to you to the best of our ability good I mean that's the whole that's why we came here in the first place, you know? That that mine. And, well, I suppose we're abandoning it now. <laughs> but it's still... I mean, everything there used to be fine until it it wasn't. And now that place too is just full of... Full of nightmares. Of course. We'll definitely, uh keep that in mind as we don't go in the mine at all ever i'm going in the mine <laughs> <laughs> okay well wish me luck hopefully i can catch up to the others and not die alone in the jungle uh, stay safe yeah that's that's a plan um and virion yes if, if you ever find yourself in Erica for, for, for any reasons, um, if you find a guy named the Pelbag, uh, tell him I sent you. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> I'm off. Me. On his little legs. He starts jogging away from this area. As soon as he's, like, out of view, Varian just turns back. So we're going in the mine. <laughs> we are going in the mine. It nuts. <laughs> wow. He really just was just a little guy after all. <laughs> Sometimes a little guy is just a little guy. Yeah. Yeah, I think Tekka will take a quick, like, one to two minutes just scouring the nearby area for any resources or supplies they left behind. Uh, and if there's nothing, yeah, just gonna go open that big metal door. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not gonna leave it up to a roll because it's, uh, uh, like, you're not, you're not looking for, like, uh, food in the jungle. Uh, this is an encampment and there is very few things that have been left behind, especially in terms of food. Uh, and supplies, because um, these are exactly the things that people have been have taken with them for um, their journey. Um, but anything that was like too heavy to take or they wouldn't necessarily need on the road is still here. Uh, a lot of it is mining equipment, um, pickaxes, carts. Uh, if there's anything in particular that you'd want, you'd probably find it just discarded. There a lamp. Yeah, there's lamps. It will take a lamp. And then a How lamp about... oil. Okay, you can take the lamp explosives? and like... Uh... Ooh, oh. I'll roll for those. Um, Or actually, roll an investigation. Check. Okay. Um, and uh, you can find up to five oil um, containers, like the centered ones. Sure, I'll take them all. Uh, 
Viren, you know that the gnomes are just extremely protective of their um, unmaking powder technology and anything that has mm -hmm. to do with it. Uh, so you, you weren't really expecting to find anything left behind and you did not find it. No explosives. Sure. Uh, if you can think of something in terms of mining equipment that you would have liked to, to, to get, and like you think about it later, um, you can probably have it retroactively. Okay. Uh, so don't think That's too hard about it now. Um, opening the the door that's been pointed out to you however, will require an athletics check. Uh, yeah. Take a will gladly do that. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. You look at this massive metal door. You can tell it's incredibly heavy just from looking at it. And like for a moment, you think about the fact that in, norm and then in <laughs> under normal circumstances, you would look back and ask Brooke to handle this. The Brooke isn't here and you have to be strong. <laughs> and you are. You pull this thing open. This door that wasn't designed to be opened by a single person. Um, it screeches. And you open it just enough so that all of you can kind of squeeze through. Not, not all the way. But that's all you need. Uh, inside it's pitch black. Some of you can see through it anyway, but you've also just gathered some lamps, I believe. And you might have your own. Uh, I, I think Pontifex usually makes his own lights. Uh, yeah. Which he will. <clears throat> and ahead of you is this twisting maze of passageways. And you can see at first, as you step in, that these are all old. They are part of the ruins that used to be here in the first place. But the rails that, that uh, uh, the, the minecart rails that go through, these are clearly uh, gnomish and being put here very recently. Uh, the occasional um, abandoned tool left behind is also gnomish sized and newer, but otherwise the environment itself is, uh, is old. And it's massive and sprawling. Uh, you can see just so far. There's lights occasionally, um, uh, torches on the walls that are still lit. Uh, oh, I clicked on the wrong thing. <laughs> You're kind of on an elevated position. Uh, and as I said, you can see really far despite being underground. You begin your descent, and it feels a little daunting, actually. There's going to be a lot to explore here. Everyone make a perception check. I'm missing Tekka? Recognize? Yeah, okay. Virion is the only one who hears it, and um, I mean, you're, you've already made uh, um, you've already made your way into the mines, so you're quite a distance away before it's this distant echo. Not ahead of you, but behind you. The door closing behind you. That little guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just your fate warned you. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't say it was him. Why, why would you it's do him. <laughs> He's a gnome. He would never do that to me specifically. <laughs> 
Oh, very end. Yeah. No, we we got we got history. It's fine. <laughs> we cool. We cool. Yeah. Fine. They I believe. Change you. ammo. You know, that's a ritual. That's a whole bond. <laughs> it's like when Pip trades rocks with someone. Yeah. <laughs> How far away <clears throat> from the door are we when that happens? Like, a, you've been walking more for than five like, minutes. Okay. By the time this happens, so I think Vary just like kind of pauses and turns back and frowns and it sounds like the the door might have swung closed. Keep that in mind. We need to find another exit. Somewhere down here, there has to be answers. And, um, are there, like, any wooden beams along the... Yeah. The especially, the especially in the, um, like, the side passages that don't actually lead anywhere, and those look like they have been more freshly dug. Uh, Tekka will make, like, a small carving at the nearest, like, wooden beam. Just to, like I have a sense of direction. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tekka, you uh, leave a small sign into the wood. Something you you know will lead you back uh, the way you came from if you need to, or will tell you if you've already been in this area before. You figure it will help you to not get lost, and then you take ten, fifteen steps. You reach the next wooden beam, and the exact same symbol is chiseled in the wood. Uh, yeah, take, I think Tekka will immediately run back to the first beam and <laughs> see if it's still there. It's still there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think with that, Tekka will just, like, stare, have an empty stare. Just, like, clearly thinking of something, deep in thought about something. Is everything alright? This place, there's some magic or something. Do not trust what you see. That's what uh, Helwick said, right? Uh, full of nightmares? Pontifex proceeds to wave his staff around. Um, and you've seen him cast his spell countless times. And the moment it's done, he immediately says to all of you that everything here is just full of magic. And the moment he says that, uh, Pip, the minecart rails, uh, the metal part of them, uh, the one you're standing next to, it, it detaches, and he tries to grab you by the leg. Excuse me? <laughs> I kick it. Uh, <laughs> you you kick it immediately, like you would like suddenly realize there's a snake at your feet, and you just kick it. Um, the Ow. <laughs> it hurts your foot. <laughs> My foot. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you, you, perhaps perhaps you scared it. Does it ha does it have a mind? You're not sure. It recoils back, and you just start running away from it. Uh, Tekka, the, the wooden beam that you have just uh, written into, it begins to creak. It, it's a, that, that sound that wood makes when it's about to snap. Run! <laughs> uh, yeah, Tekka will just dart away from that beam. Oh, one moment, there's a knock on my door. <laughs> <gasps> This is scary. Yeah. Yeah, this, 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 the beam... oh. Go on. The whole dungeon mimic. Yeah, I was just thinking about mimic mime. <laughs> mine, mimic mine. Mine Nick. Mine Nick. 
So do we think they're mining like this stuff for powder of a making here? Very likely. Yeah. How stupid do you have to be to make a mine in ancient haunted ruins? Yeah. <laughs> I'm back. Welcome okay. back. Sorry about that. So, um, I believe you said you're running. Yeah, darting away. Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. Uh, Take you tell everybody to just start running, and as you begin to to follow your own instructions, the wooden beam that you just scratched that symbol into, it begins to collapse right on the spot where you were standing a moment ago. Uh, it falls heavily onto the ground and lifts up this cloud of dust, and you'll run. Uh, you, you pick a direction, doesn't matter which one, you just go. Um, everything around you, all the lights that were already lit, they flicker, and then one by one they begin to go out. Uh, you would be plunged in darkness if it wasn't for your own lanterns and for Pontifex's own magic. But it feels like this darkness that is growing all around you is... It's just so dense and suffocating. The radius of your own light is beginning to diminish until you can barely see where you're stepping. Everything uh, beneath you it begins to be covered in this low purple mist. Now you can no longer see exactly where you're stepping. You just know you are in this dense kind of fog. Each of you is beginning to feel this sense of dread just climbing up your spine. You experienced something like this just very recently and it's... It's all coming back. Just like it was before. You're almost losing track of what you're doing and where you are and just trying to focus on your mission. There's gotta be something here, there's gotta be something here. And then you see it. The pair of glowing golden eyes just further up ahead. You all come to a stop. Uh, Nui has been following you this entire time, not quite uh, uh, really being able to, to help or do anything about this, but just as scared as you guys are. You all make eye contact with uh, the eyes of uh, the, fang, uh, the fangs of Nightfall. And then you see another set of eyes like that. And then another, and then another, and then another, until you're surrounded. Countless machines all around you, beginning to step towards your group. Closer and closer, each of them holding a bow, and that's really all you can see of them, just the front side of them where the, your own lights are reflecting on their, on their metallic bodies. And as they all begin to draw the string of their respective weapons, they all pause, all at once. And then you hear a voice. From... Somewhere behind them, ahead of you, in the darkness that, that, that is enveloping you, that just calls out, And what are you doing here? All of the machines, they vanish. The darkness around you, it, it's dispersed. The mist at your feet, it's gone. You're just somewhere in the mine. You're not really quite sure which tunnel you walked into. Uh, you, one of the many hundreds. The lights um, that were already in the mine, they, they all return. And up ahead you see a figure, um, taller than a gnome, tall like a, a, a standard humanoid, average humanoid, um, completely covered from head to toe in clothes. He's wearing a hood and uh, um, a metal mask over his face. His features are completely unknown to, to any of you. You've never seen this particular mask uh, um, or the clothes that he's wearing, but the majority of you recognize the voice immediately. You've heard this voice on certain days when misfortune struck and you got really, really close to dying. And you had visions what? of a drow. You recognize that voice, and that's where we'll end the session. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh! What? Okay, that was not expected. That was definitely not expected. 
Bring up the conspiracy board! <laughs> <laughs> what on earth? That's great. I what? really like that. I like that a lot. Oh, yeah. Drows are actually gnomes? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. That's the takeaway? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know what to take away from this. <laughs> I'm next that time. Cool glowing cube. Let me just. Yeah. <laughs> oh, his theme music. <laughs> it's really him. <laughs> it does exist. But yeah. Uh, thank you for being here today. How's next weekend looking for everybody? I am good for next weekend. Should be okay. Wait, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm huh? great. Hold on. I'm just, I'm conspiracy theorizing here. Oh. <laughs> when, when people died and we were, we were in like his, his vision didn't they turn to dust and like fly into his cube? Oh. I don't remember that, but might be right. <laughs> they flew in his cube, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the cube then? The drawing is a cube. Is it like uh, using life energy to create stuff? Anyway, yeah, yeah, it's making a door. <laughs> Matt, call in the session. No, <laughs> we need I'm it. gonna be a door my next life. Oh, yeah, you're a door. <laughs> you're adorable. Matt. Yeah, look. Okay. The armored guards, the Krelko of Narashk, show up and look around. Their faces distorted with fear and confusion, and in a matter of seconds, they disappear, reduced to dust that is swirled up and swallowed by the cube. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Brook is in a cube now. <laughs> and that was the last. That was it. That's the last thing he needed. Now he's here on this earth, here to wreak havoc, and he's wearing a mask for some reason. <laughs> I did it. It's the Drow Man. Dang, okay. Okay, that's terrifying. Hmm. It's fine. <laughs> Alright, I'm ending the stream here. But you, you don't have All to right. leave. You can stick around if that's what you want. I'm sticking around. Okay. I'm interrogating you. <laughs> See you next week. Bye! Bye. Bye.